Hi, this is Guy Shavit with Signamax. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to configure ERPS or Ethernet Ring Protection Switching on our i300 series switches. So first of all, what is ERPS and, and why is it needed? So the first problem is uh, loops. Ethernet uh, does not handle loops, uh, and if there's a any switch that sends a broadcast, replicates it through all ports, if it gets it back through another port, it will not recognize and know that this is a, a packet or frame that it's already received and broadcasted, and hence it will send it again. So if you take uh, you know, just two switches and connect between themselves with two links, uh, first broadcast that enters that network will replicate indefinitely and, and wipe out the whole network. So from the get-go, uh, there were multiple different ways to handle loops. Uh, the first and, and most common is spanning tree. Uh, spanning tree, as the name implies, uh, tries to build a tree with a root and branches uh, type of topology. Uh, from your network, uh, it makes sense in traditional enterprise environments uh, where there are multiple layers, usually three, of uh, switches from uh, access aggregation to core, uh, and then uh, maybe interconnection between them for redundancy sake and so forth. The problem with spanning tree is that it takes 30 to 60 seconds to converge, uh, and uh, also, there is a practical limitation in the number of hops uh, that spanning tree will uh, effectively work. Uh, common a rule of thumb is seven, uh, which is more than adequate in a regular enterprise environment. But when you uh, started having uh, metro Ethernet or, or Ethernet as uh, you know in a metro setting, uh, it made sense from a wiring standpoint, uh, fiber links and so forth and distances uh, to connect between many devices in a, a ring type or loop topology versus doing a star, uh, which would be more common in, in an enterprise. Uh, and then you needed much more than seven hops and also uh, much faster convergence time. Uh, now, I will mention spanning tree was improved with uh, rapid spanning tree, which is standard on uh, all enterprise uh, switches now, definitely Sigmax uh, uh, switches. And in that case, uh, they can uh, detect a failure, uh, you know, in a much faster, you're talking two to six seconds uh, versus the, you know, closer to a minute, uh, but still not fast enough for a metro Ethernet type environment. So, spanning a so ERPS, uh, also known by the way as uh, ITU TG8032, uh, is really built for a ring type topology, uh, as we're seeing here, uh, where uh, there is a redundancy on each link. So, a, any one of the links fails, uh, the ring stays active. And again, convergence in ERPS is uh, less than 50 uh, milliseconds. Uh, there was an improvement in ERPS, also known as ERPS uh, version 2, uh, which allowed subrings, uh, in which case uh, you would have a, you could have a much higher level of redundancy. You could have two or three uh, failures uh, concurrently. Uh, you could even do something called laddering, in which case you have full redundancy. Every single link is redundant. Uh, but uh, today on the i300 uh, switches, which support ERPS version 2, uh, I only have two switches here that I'm going to make a simple uh, ring of just the two of them. Uh, so I'm not going to be doing any subrings between them because uh, there's only two switches. And we're going to start with two switches being default. Uh, I have uh, my computers connected to this switch here. Uh, I have an additional device connected uh, to the other switch, and I can ping between them, as we can see here. Uh, and currently, the connected uh, port 19 on this switch connects to 20 on, on the other switch, and, and vice versa. 
And as you can see, uh, currently we have two links up, and that's because by default, uh, spanning tree is enabled on these switches. Uh, so if we look here, uh, we will see, and let me open the other one as well. Uh, I'm going to see this switch is the root, uh, so both of the, the ports are going to be up and forwarding. Okay, this switch is not the root, uh, which means as we can look here, we'll see that port 19 uh, is set to uh, discarding, uh, meaning only port 20 is being used, and that link between port 19 here and port 20 on the root uh, is uh, deactivated by spanning tree. Uh, what that means, though, is if I take uh, port 20 uh, on this switch, which hopefully I'm picking the right one here, and disconnect it, uh, this is a uh, we will see that we had a, a drop here until the spanning tree was able to converge. Uh, and also we will see that when I take and reinstate that link, which I will do now. Yeah, we see as I reinstated the link, we also had a drop in that case because uh, spanning tree, uh, every topology change uh, requires all the switches to recalculate the tree. And while they're doing that, they're not forwarding traffic. Uh, in order to avoid a loop situation, uh, it's a conservative protocol from that standpoint. Okay. so. We're going to configure ERPS, and uh, first of all, I'm going to go to the more remote uh, switch, which is this one, since my computer is connected uh, to the dot three, and I'll go to ERPS, configuration, enable, and we're going to see right away a message. I can't enable ERPS until I disable spanning tree, uh, so I need to do that. I'm going to go to the spanning tree configuration and disable. And the second that I do, uh, I am going to find that, or maybe not the second, a couple seconds later, I've uh, lost access to the device I had there. I'm actually going to see that I lost access to uh, the switch itself because once I disabled spanning tree, uh, now I have I have a loop, right? And since there's a loop broadcast, it's it's destroying my network. There is almost no way to get through and be able to do anything. Uh, I'm going to physically disable one of the links in order to uh, fix that loop situation. Okay, so what what do I do with the if I'm not next to the switches physically, if I was uh, doing this all through remote access. Well, first, let me get us back in the situation we were before with spanning tree uh, being enabled in the two links, and I will show you how I would do this uh, from afar. So first of all, let's reconfigure spanning tree here on this device so that we can go ahead and connect the second link. Uh, I'm going to plug it back in. Okay, let's see that we are back in the same status that we were earlier. Uh, yeah, the port 19 here is being discarded. Uh, so what I would do is I would take this port on the switch that is closer to what I'm connected to, the switch that I'm connected to, uh, and just disable it. So I go to layer two switching here, port management, port settings, and port 19, I would disable it. Right. Once I do that, uh, I will only have a single link between the switches, and then I don't have to worry about uh, going to this remote switch and disabling spanning tree. I will go now to ERPS configuration. I'm going to enable it. Uh, now, as I mentioned before, in this case, we're just going to configure one simple ring, but it is possible to configure three up to three rings on each switch, a major ring and uh, two sub rings. 
uh, or possibly two major rings if they're uh, uh, separated from each other. Uh, and the way ring topology works is there's always a west and an east port. Now remember, we're using ports 19 and 20 here to connect between the switches. So those are going to be our ports, 19 and 20. And the roles are as follows. One switch is going to have an owner on one of those ports, doesn't matter which. The other side of that same link, so the neighboring switch that is under the side of the owner is going to be a neighbor, and everything else is none. Right? So if I had 20 switches here, there would be one switch that has an owner on one of the west ports. The switch next to it on the east port would be a neighbor. All other ports are none. What is interconnection? Interconnection is, if we look back at the diagram we had here, interconnection is going to be where you have a, a subring and a major ring that are interconnecting. So the, this is connecting between uh, two rings. Uh, again, in our scenario here, I'm going to make this be the owner. Uh, the ring ID, you have no need to change any of this stuff here. Uh, the ring ID just needs to match between uh, all the different devices on the same ring. Uh, the, the channel is actually a VLAN number. So by default, it's 1,000. You can change it. Uh, if you are using VLAN 1,000 in your network, then you should change it to a VLAN that's not being used in your network. Right? Okay. Apart from that, there's no reason to change it. Uh, one other thing I will mention uh, when I start talking about you know, spanning tree and how we got to ERPS and so on. Uh, I skipped a step, which is proprietary uh, ring protocols. Uh, different vendors created uh, you know, Turbo Ring, I Ring, S Ring, all kinds of names, similar technology, but not necessarily interoperable. Uh, the advantage of using a switch that supports ERPS is that we could have different devices from different manufacturers within the same ring and there's uh, interoperability between them. Okay, now let's go back to our local switch, and we have to do the same thing, which is, first of all, disable the spanning tree. And we need to configure uh, before we configure the ERPS, actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn on uh, this uh, port that we disabled earlier. And then I'm going to go back to configuring the ERPS. I'm going to enable it, uh, ports 19 and 20. And this is going to be our neighbor. Now let's look at our status. And we're going to see the ring state is normal. The node state is pending. It is going to be pending uh, for five minutes. Uh, so we're going to come back in, in five minutes uh, and uh, see us in our, our regular state. OK, so we're back. And now we can see the node state is idle. What I wanted to mention is that when it was pending, uh, it was still working, traffic was passing, uh, the ERPS was still uh, in the protection. Uh, a, I just wanted to wait before we continue with uh, the demonstration just so you see the idle state. This would be the normal situation in an idle network. Uh, both sides here are going to say uh, that their, their state is normal. They, status at idle, that means that that the owner is blocking traffic between itself and the neighbor and everything else, all other links are off, right? Now, what happens if we, and, and we can also see that I can get traffic through to the, the other device, uh, if I drop one of the links, and we go over there, you can see 420 is down, uh, we didn't drop anything the status of both switches is going to tell you now that it's, the ring state is abnormal. It's in protection state. What does that mean? That means the two switches that saw the link go down that were next to it 
uh, they alert all the other switches in the ring. We have a, a link failure. They block that link that is in fail mode. And then the owner knows to unblock, and the owner, the neighbor knows to unblock the link between themselves. Uh, so traffic continues. Right? This is uh, the, the mechanism here is because the RPS only has to deal with rings, which is a simpler topology than spanning tree would have to do, which could be like a mesh environment. Uh, that's why it's able to, to handle things so much uh, more efficiently, if you will. Uh, now, if I connect this uh, link back, uh, what we're going to see is that the state is going to change uh, from normal to pending on both of them. Uh, and again, it's going to be in a pending state for five minutes, but that doesn't mean, uh, and, and I did not have like in spanning tree a drop here on the way. You see all the responsible within one millisecond. Uh, it, the fact that it's in pending does not mean that it's not working. I'll disconnect other uh, port now, and we'll see that also go from abnormal you know, to protection. And again, no drops, no issues. Uh, now, of course, if I disconnect both links, uh, as I just did, uh, now uh, we're going to see timeouts because now there is no root whatsoever. Uh, and in that case, uh, I have, I have no, no links between them. Uh, but the second that I connect back, again, we do not have that convergence uh, time or issue that we have with spanning tree. Uh, we're going to get access back to the device and everything goes back to normal uh, immediately. Again, the pending state uh, is going to be until there's a, uh, after in uh, a failure, uh, when the switches report back that the link is back up, uh, then the owner is going to send out a, a packet that basically is a timer and saying, okay, from now on, you know, we're entering this uh, pending state, start the timer, uh, and then when the timer ends and it goes to idle, they'll switch over so that the owner's link is back up in the link that was down. Be I'm sorry, the owner's link is, is back down in the link that was uh, that failed earlier and is currently being blocked will be unblocked, right? So that's why it's in a pending state. It does not mean that, as you saw before, that it's, it's not functioning or protection. It just isn't the normal state of affairs which is the owner to neighbor link being down. Right now the owner to neighbor link is, is up and the link, the, the last link that I caused to fail is the one that's gonna be down. Anyway, that is how you configure ERPS on i300 series switches. Uh, I hope you found the, the video educational and you check out our other i300 uh, series videos. Thank you.